subtle power of our thought goes beyond our environment. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah chapter 3, 3. So it is so, the mind of man has to solve all phenomena. All the relative world is phenomena. It is created, but it's natural phenomena. We will know then that this natural phenomena is the outcome of the infinite consciousness expressing itself in thought, in variety. So the variety of forms and the phenomena we see in the world which is natural is none other than the expression of the infinite mind. And all must be within the mind because there can be nothing outside the infinite mind. Because there is no outside the infinite mind, all is within it. So all is an expression of that one mind. And what we see in the universe, what we see before our eyes, is but the expression of this phenomena. But man has to solve this phenomena to find out what it is. And by doing so, he learns about himself. He learns about his thought, the power of his thought, and his own creativity. He sees everything that is relative before his eyes. He discerns all the relative. He becomes aware of his own actions, his thoughts, his feelings, and his emotions. He becomes aware of all these things. Therefore, he is aware of what is taking place in his mind. And behind that awareness is the reality. So therefore, man recognizes one thing, he becomes aware of everything that is relative. And in that awareness, he begins to become aware of something else that is behind that awareness, which is reality itself, creativeness. Now, creativeness does not come into being all at once. It comes into being completely when you discern your minds and all that is in your minds, from your reaction to things external to yourselves. Therefore, you see that all these things are relative, of no existence at all, except in your own mind, at all. Your reactions to things external to yourselves have no existence except in your own mind your fears, your anxieties, your beliefs, are all in the mind, are all part of the mind. Unless you discern them for what they are, they will always be troubling you. When you find what they are, they pass away and dissolve out of existence. They no longer trouble you. Now we have seen in our last lesson that thought after its circuit in the mind and body goes out beyond in waves into the ether at the speed of light. Lest you do not know the speed of light, it moves at the rate of 186,000 miles per second. Science has shown us that the wavelength of light varies from 20 to 30 millionth of an inch. And the frequency of these waves impulses range from 400 million million to 700 million million cycles per second. These are beyond the physical eye. The eye cannot see them. You couldn't see a 30th million part of an inch, could you? Yet that exists. Science has also shown us that the electromagnetic wave travels at speed of light, but have various wavelengths determined by the apparatus from which they are sent. This analogy I want to show is similar to thought waves, and someday, in the near future, science will be able to measure the wavelengths of thought. 
I have already shown to you that thought is in itself a form of intelligent energy, the wavelength being according to the thought expressed and the development of the individual sending it. Thought must be an intelligent energy because it's an energy that is being expressed from an intelligence itself. As we will see clearly later on, how those vibrations, we would call cosmic rays, which come from the sun, are intelligent. They know there is a knowing how in these rays to perform the action and the activity that they are sent forward to do. So is the thought of man an intelligent energy with a wavelength for knowing how to produce and within the thought is carried the idea. So the thought it produces its kind through electromagnetic waves which enter into the ether and cause the ether to be magnetized to form the image according to the idea. Now, as the ether is magnetized, just like the radio wave that comes over from the radio station, we hear a sound, we listen in, and we hear the word. We hear the word and we create the idea of the word in our minds. We are then able to understand the meaning of the words the speaker says over the radio station. It comes into our ears, we hear it, then we create the image in our own minds of what we hear. So does the same thing happen in the ether when a thought moves out of the ether carrying these same electromagnetic waves which also magnetize the ether. Your sixth sense is the consciousness. It has the power also of discerning or interpreting these vibrations and in that way subconsciously the movement takes place in the being. The consciousness being the sixth sense absorbs these vibrations just as your ears absorb the vibrations of the sound of the word that takes place through the atmosphere from the radio station. Therefore these electromagnetic vibrations which are moving into the atmosphere has an intelligence and they are affecting the minds of people all over the world. That's why our thoughts here can influence the world when we know how to set them forth. The ancients knew the science of thought, for Jesus was the greatest exponent of this great science. And when we understand him, we will see the power behind his wonderful feet. The ancients knew that the sun's rays were thought waves from beings in the sun, giving expression to the life within themselves. The waves of energy suitable for life in, on this planet of ours, charging the atmosphere with the light which we breathe. As we read back, we will see that the ancients will say the ancient Magi, the ancient masters of Persia, who understood a great many things that we do not know even today, they were what to call sun worshippers. But they were not worshipping the sun. They knew that their parents were in the sun, because the sun is the parent of this earth. The sun is the parent of all the planets that surround the sun, that's moving around it in their orbits. Therefore, everything on this earth has its parent in the sun. From the very mineral up to the highest creation of man. The ancient Persians knew this and mathematically understood it because they could and have by the ancient law they used, found the exact distance of the planets from the sun. 
which are today verified by our scientific instruments. Wherefore they knew that the thought waves were from beings in the sun which were their parents, and naturally they received from the sun enlightenment which could not be obtained in any other way. Now the sun rays set in motion the activity of the atoms and cells of the body to combine, build, and transform, for such is the function of life. Without the sun rays, life as we know it would be impossible on this planet. So we see that the sun rays set in motion activity in the atoms and cells of the body, which must have been a very intelligent ray carrying with it the power to produce what it was sent forth to do. The spectrum, with its variation of colors from the purple to the red, is but varying wavelengths of the sun rays which have their effect upon the mineral, vegetable, and animal kingdoms. We have some time ago dealt with this most wonderful thing. Many of you have heard me which I give you a few lectures on sound and color. I showed you the various vibrations and the colors of those sounds, and also you were able to understand the feelings of these various vibrations that entered into the body. You found certain vibrations affected the top of the head, certain vibrations affected the throat, the stomach, the intestines, and so forth through the sound, and each sound has its own color. Therefore, we see that the spectrum itself is a movement. The color is what we call the motion of the sound, or the motion of the vibration. You cannot have vibration without movement, because the sound is the sound of the movement of the vibration, carries with it its own color. Music, for instance, every note has its own color and vibration. The colors of each particular sound can be noted according to the vibration set in operation. So therefore, everything is what we call thought, sound, and color is the manifestation of the thought and sound in operation. Therefore, the spectrum, with its variations of color, from the purple to the red, are but the varying wavelengths of the sun rays which have their effect upon the mineral, vegetable, and animal kingdoms. It is the rays of the sun that set into motion the combinations and transformation of the atoms which result in the growth and disintegration of the substance we know as physical matter, the hardening and decomposition of rocks and the creation of the various minerals are the result of the rays of the spectrum according to the color fulfilling its particular purpose. These colors are of various wavelengths according to the vibrations <coughs> of intensity of the wavelength of the ray. In the vegetable world, the same principle is used. The sun rays or impulses create the activity for the combination and transformation of the atoms. The spectrum revealed in the array of beauty and splendor of the color of the flowers, plants and trees, etc. Each vegetable we use contain within it the vital elements charged with the electromagnetic force generated from the impact of these rays. Every portion of thing that you eat, the vital elements that are built in the food, in the vegetables, the fruit, if they are of any value to you, must be charged with this electromagnetic force generated by the impact of the sun's rays. If those elements are not in the food, 
then your food is of little value. It is these elements that absorb the sun's rays. They become active holders of these rays. And when you take them into your body, they become active in your body, expressing the rays of the sun, causing the whole of your atomic structure to absorb these rays so that your body can be held in its proper state. And every atom, there is a sun ray. The, the collection of what we will say pitch, which we find in different parts of the world, and after it has been worked upon, what we call disintegrated, what do we find after a thousand or more tons of that stuff has been worked upon to disintegrate it, therefore to extract from within it a ray known as radium. That tiny particle of radium is a collection of myriads, myriads of particles of sun rays which are collected and gathered together naturally because of the attraction of one substance according to its vibration. Therefore, as we use millions of tons of rock and pit, whatever the case may be, crush it up, pass it through a process, extracting from the process those tiny, million, million, millionth part of the sun rays, all attracted together, which form as one atom of radium, which has a terrific power and if you held it in your finger, it would burn a hole in your finger in less than no time. If you carried on your clothes, it would burn a hole through your body. Therefore, it has to be protected with a large lead container so that the rays will not penetrate and cause injury. In every particle of the soil, in every particle of wood, in everything you see, vegetable, ground, animal, and human, there is these tiny particles of the sun rays which at the present time is giving you life and activity in the body. These rays are intelligent, and we have found that radium is the most intelligent and powerful thing we have on this earth. Someday we will know more about the cosmic ray and its impact upon the earth's surfaces and conditions which penetrate deep down into the earth because of the fact that this table is porous, my body is porous, the earth is porous. These rays are so minute in their nature that they pass through the very half of the atom, which is an invisible thing, and cause it to change and transform into something else. That is the intelligence. And what is the spark of man? That which is in with man himself is the consciousness that has control of everything in heaven and on earth doesn't know it yet. In the animal kingdom, the same operation takes place. This includes the human body. The body contains the elements of the earth, the elements of water, the elements of heat, the elements of air, the elements of ether. Or in these provinces, the sun rays create the combinations and transformations of the atoms of the varying vibrations into composite body we know as the human body. The sun rays transform the atoms of water into vapor, which is carried into the heavens. The same rays of the sun create currents of air which drive this vapor into clouds. The same rays create vacuum causing condensation of this vapor, which we know as rain. This is known as the wheel of life, correlating all the effects we see in the four kingdoms, mineral, vegetable, animal, and human. It is the rays of this intelligent energy with the knowing how to combine and transform the etherons of ether 
into atoms and electrons which combine to materialize what we see and feel. Therefore, ether is the basis of matter and the framework in which matter is built. Thus the ancients said that the world was created out of the void, the invisible primordial substance which permeates throughout the whole universe. Therefore we know that science has shown us clearly that ether is the basis of all matter. Ether that interpenetrates all space. I'm not going to go too fast ahead to show you how this ether is affected and how these etherons are brought into operation and how the atoms are built and then how the materialization of the atoms take place that you see before your eyes. That will come in time because it is necessary for us to know the operation that takes place so that phenomena is produced. Unless we know that, we can never understand how our own conditions come about. We are the creator of certain conditions in our own body because of our misunderstanding of the operations of the infinite mind working through us. Now this substance is relative to something that is not relative, something that is absolute, wherein remains the why of everything, which we can never know. For if we did so, it would become relative. We can understand the how, but not the why. Yet within ourselves this unknowable must always remain ever unknowable. We will forever get to know more and more of the relative universe as we unfold. But that which is unknowable will remain unknowable. But nevertheless, we can become aware of it. And at this very moment, I am using it. It is using me. I am using it, and it is using me. We are part and partial together. We are welded as one. Therefore, it uses me, and I use it. It uses me as an expression for itself, and I use it as an expression for myself. For it is the servant of all. He who is greatest amongst you is the servant of all. Unless we can see this clearly, we will never know ourselves to be. Being is now. It does not have to be. You do not create being. It never becomes because it's being. If it had to become, it could not be. Because it is being, it is now. The same from the beginning, for all time. Never changing, but the same. That is that which is in me. That is that which is beyond my awareness. And what I am aware of is phenomena. But I must understand this phenomenon. If I do not understand the phenomenon, and all that is relative, then I shall never know what is behind my awareness. Because I'll be caught up in this relative world of mine. Even if I tell you all about those relative things, remember this, that that I know is behind it all, remains the same, the creativeness behind all things. This unknowable cannot be affected by anything external to itself, and the same will always remain the same within us. This is the source of all power, all action, all movement, and this can be proved by the individual who will take the trouble to know himself. There will always be an unknowable that is not relative, that is always discerning the activity, yet 
is not itself the activity. This is the great mystery in your life. I want you to understand. You know that it is, but not what it is. The real call cosmic interpenetrates everything, the etherons, the atoms. I coined the word etherons because of the fact that ether in itself is what we call a negative condition, something that is negative. It is a negative substance that is played upon by the electromagnetic vibrations of thought, causing these smaller particles in ether which I call etherons, to form according to the image in the mind, or the idea in the mind. The thought being the power which it creates electromagnetic vibration. The idea being the image. The consciousness being the power that directs the force. Thought then comes into operation because the consciousness reflects the idea held in the mind. The consciousness alone has power to create. It is creativeness in itself. It's the source of your thinking, the source of your thought. Your thought goes out in electromagnetic vibrations. It causes these ethereons to become magnetized, to form according to the image which is held in the mind, the idea. Then later on, as these etherons become active, they gather together particles of a self, electrical nature, which become atoms in their nature. And the combination and the accumulation of these atoms, forming a conjugal image, becomes the condensation and materialization of the thought itself. And that is exactly what the universe is. And that's what your thoughts are too, within yourselves. So it causes movement in everything through which it travels. Our individual consciousness is stimulated into action, giving us power to create through the avenue of thought. When the equilibrium of the atoms is disturbed, they are set in motion. They begin to combine and transform according to the subtle purpose of the ray and according to the consciousness in the various kingdoms, so are the rays of sunlight assimilating. In the consciousness, I showed you the various planes of activity before. I say mineral, vegetable, animal, so forth, higher and higher. And we saw clearly that the consciousness is a perpendicular thing that goes through all these planes of activity, involving itself in these various formations, mineral, vegetables, animal, human. According then to the consciousness is involved in the mineral, so does it absorb the rays of the sun for the creation of the various minerals in existence. So the consciousness in the mineral has a capacity to absorb certain vibrations suitable for the mineral and that causes a transformation <coughs> in the minerals. The various kingdoms utilize the rays according to their capacity to receive. Each kingdom in the scale reveals a higher intelligence in action. The human being is able through understanding to neutralize the rays with the highest capacity, intelligence and power. And we find that those who have the greater capacity to love are able to utilize this power in a greater degree such is the scheme of nature. So, the greater the capacity to love in the human plane enables the rays of these intelligent beings in the sun that are pouring them forth for the purpose of creation, transforming the atoms, creating finer and finer forms. So we see that those who are capable, who have the greater capacity to love, 
are able to utilize this power in a greater degree. Such is the scheme of nature. In this lesson, I'd like to compare the living being called man with that of a radio station with the added note that within man himself is the means and mechanism to radio and receive thought waves. Everything that is created in the world, no matter what it may be, is a creation of man's mind. And there is nothing that is not created, nothing that can be created in the world except it's a creation of man's mind. But the fact still remains that every mechanical device that man creates, he has the same mechanical device within himself in a higher nature. We will see as time goes on, the next series of lessons, how man's body becomes lighter and lighter, how the masters can produce and overcome what we call gravity. It's an easy, simple thing to do. Supposing now we find that you breathe in, you breathe in cold air. Continuously breathing in cold air, the air inside becomes hot, does it not? Therefore, the hot air wants to get back to the cold air, does it not? Of course it does. That's the whole thing. If you then continually create <coughs> a certain magnetism in the body, which is attractive to this mechanism that is outside, and this outside is continually attracting it to it, and your body becomes filled with this magnetic substance that is continually being attracted to this which is above it, it becomes lighter and lighter until such time as gravity disappears. By the ordinary will, your only will, you can move your body from part to part, from place to place, without any difficulty at all. That's how the masters move their bodies, what we call true space, or the long pom-pom man, which moves up through to bed. Each step he takes about 30 or 40 feet, and he passes you like an express train, and moves over mountains without any difficulty, hardly touching the ground. Therefore, it is a science that we'll eventually begin to understand. At the present time, I'm not going into it. The simple reason will be this off our track at the moment. But the time will come when I will show you the exact movements that take place that cause this activity. I'll also show you the exact sounds in your own bodies that can keep the whole of your atomic structure of your body young, so that it does not disintegrate. What is it now that causes you to become old, and the atoms to become old also? Because it is your own <coughs> cells. If you knew the sound that was in yourselves, your inner sound, that sound, that note that belongs to you, and if you could sound that note every day, you'd cause the proper equilibrium and harmonious note through the whole of your body, and you'll find that your body becomes young. It does not get old at all. And time comes when you want to leave the body, you can leave it at random. You could leave it here if you wanted to, and just be as conscious out of it as you are in it. That is the inheritance you have within yourselves. We know that the radio wave is a radiating stream of lines of force which spread in all directions through the ether in circular motion. Not only do these waves circulate the earth but go into the stratosphere as well. That not only we go around the earth, but to go <coughs> right up into the stratosphere as well. Wherever ether is, so those vibrations and waves go. If you are miles up in the aeroplane, 7, 10, 20 miles up in the air, 
you will be able to hear just as easy as you hear on this airfield this very moment. A radio broadcast would be as easy to hear up there as it is here because ether carries those waves. Sound travels at the slow rate of about 700 miles per hour, but radio waves carry sound on its back at the rate of 186,000 miles per second through the pervading ether, charging it with electromagnetic <coughs> radio waves. So we see that when you speak over the radio, the sound of your voice traveling at the rate of about 700 miles an hour is boosted up by an electrical apparatus which sends these waves out into the atmosphere at a rate of 186,000 miles per second. Now these waves are beyond the visible ear. Therefore, they're in the atmosphere at a wavelength that is entirely shorter. So the short wavelength is beyond the ear. Now, what do you need? You need to modify these wavelengths Bring them down again through your instrument and you hear the sound of the voice exactly almost at the same time as the man gives it. But during that process, it is raised in vibration, sent through the whole of the ether, magnetized in the ether, and it can be heard all over the world, up into the atmosphere at one and the same time. Man's thought is just the same. You can hear a radio broadcast at the same time in any part of the planet or high in the stratosphere, which shows that the whole ether has been magnetized by radio waves. There can be a multiple number of waves in the ether at the same time, and they will not interfere with each other except they be on the same wavelength. We will see what happens shortly. These invisible radio waves become audible only when you have an instrument to receive them. These electromagnetic impulses are absorbed through coils, modified and transformed into sound. Man likewise has a receiving set known as the penal gland, which receives thoughts according to the wavelength that he is on otherwise according to his own thoughts and emotions. You have a receiving set just exactly the same as you have a radio receiving set. These vibrations carry through an instrument known as a penal gland. The consciousness becomes aware of these vibrations and they are felt and understood. Love is a magnetic force which has proved to be more powerful than the strongest magnetic wave used to magnetize steel. When a piece of steel is magnetized, all the particles arrange themselves into north and south poles, harmonizing the whole of the atoms in that piece of steel. And thus a piece of steel becomes a magnet because of the fact that all the atoms are formed according to the nature, north and south. If you have a piece of steel that is a magnet, it attracts another piece of steel to it. How do you then destroy the magnetization of that piece of steel? By continually giving it a blow or hammering it until such time you disintegrate or transform the atoms in the piece of steel. That's exactly what you do to your own selves through your envy, through your jealousies, through your fears, through your antagonisms and all these things. You are beating your magnetism out of you and you're no longer magnet at all. You become a piece of putty. So does love magnetize the atoms of the body turning it into a, a magnetic power, attracting the cosmic rays in greater abundance. When the pure nature of love, 
Not a love that is entirely possessive, is full of envy and full of jealousy. But the purer love you have, the stronger is your body and your mind to attract the cosmic rays to it. So it becomes a powerful expression of the cosmic ray itself. I have come that you may have life, and even more abundant life. When we hear that saying, we begin to understand more and more the mighty power that man has within himself. But he must begin to discern and understand the phenomena of the world. Yet phenomena is the relative. But we must understand the relative before we can ever know reality. Thus the one who truly loves humanity becomes a truly healthy and magnetic passion with power to create. The harmonizing of the atomic energy is based on the fundamental universal law upon which the functions of life is based. That is the law of electromagnetic principle. This principle is the basic power of creation of motion in the universe. And motion is the force for the transformation of the atoms of matter into various forms, and nature's subtle conductor is ether. We see then that nature's subtle conductor is ether, conducting these electromagnetic waves, which begin to transform the atoms in your body. And when you have fits of depression, when you have fits of anger, fits of envy, fits of antagonism, you are actually transforming the atoms in your body. What is the true nature then that brings harmony and peace to the body? Love, of course. And why does love give the body the energy and strength that it needs? Because it becomes a magnet for those tremendous forces of the sun. The cosmic rays that permeate the whole being and create harmony and peace in mind and body. In the ether, the blueprint of the creation is fixed and motion is the cause of the transformation of the etherons and atoms into form. This same ether remains as the foundation of all forms through the electromagnetic principle. This same ether fills all space and all space between the atoms and conducts its magnetic field between them. The same ether holds all together in the universe and there is no space where it is not. It is the conductor of all impulses and thought is the most powerful of all when understood, for it is by thought the universe is built. I'll read that again because it is most enlightening and it is necessary for you to read it carefully yourselves over and over again until such time as it becomes freely understood. In ether the blueprint of the creation is fixed and motion is the cause of the transformation of the etherons and atoms into form. The same ether remains as the foundation of all forms through the electromagnetic principle. This same ether fills all space and all space between the atoms and conducts its magnetic field between them. This same ether holds all together in the universe and there is no space where it is not. It is a conductor of all impulses, and thought is the most powerful of all when understood, for it is by thought the universe is built. The Master say control of the prana means control of all universal phenomena, and control of the prana means control of the dynamic power and energy in the universe. 
I have stated before, and now this statement may carry a greater significance to you. Ether is the basis of all matter, the framework in which matter is built. Ether responds to thought and forms according to the idea in the mind. You've heard me say that often enough. But it has just been a platitude to you. But when you begin to see the formation, the beginning to see the how of activities, how the creation of the atoms take place, how you see how phenomena in the universe takes place, then you will understand how phenomena within yourselves take place. By doing so, you will no longer be ignorant, and sayings of Christ and Jesus will no longer be platitudes to you, but will become words of understanding, which will give you a greater and more wonderful comprehension of the phenomena in the universe and in yourselves. So is the mighty power of God that I have inherited from him from the very beginning and from the very highest from his very consciousness from his very intelligence from the very essence from the ether from the transformation of the atoms and the knowing how that is all within me and within you you will say how does he know all these things? How is it possible for one man to understand all these things? I say nothing at all. I am taking it from the atmosphere. I am giving you the words that are given to me from those who understand and who know that these things are true. As I said, the penal gland of man is a receiver. The pituitary gland is a man that projects. Is it not so that when you're thinking deeply, there is a bowing of the head? There is a negative state. The penile gland goes into operation. It receives thoughts. These vibrations are transferred through the inner senses, through the perceptive sensor within. It is carried then to the mind. The mind then, the consciousness becomes aware of it and becomes a reality. Then as the consciousness becomes aware of it, instantaneously is received in the flash of a thousandth part of a second. The consciousness becomes aware of it and gives expression to it. How does it give expression to it? Because through the whole of the organism of the brain begins to function and causes the cells, nerves, and everything to form the words according to the idea that is expressed in sound. The vocal cords come into the operation, the tongue, the teeth, the breath, and everything for the formation of the word. And here, that very vibration you received is given forth to you again as freely as it was received. The only difference is this, according to the receiver, so is the expression. The freer the mind is of all that is relative, all that hinders it, the purer will be the thought that comes through that particular instrument. And you have all the possibilities within yourselves. Proverbs 11, 24, 25, and 27. One gives away and still he grows richer. Another keeps what he should give as the poorer. A liberal soul will be enriched, and he who waters will himself be watered. He whose aims are good wins the goodwill of God. He whose aims are evil, evil shall be fallen. Benediction. O thou unknowable one, in thy wisdom thou hast planted thyself in me. In my ignorance I did not know my own power was one with thine, and my thoughts caused havoc 
instead of harmony. Now, O oh blessed one, I have come to know myself, and with thy eternal love to understand, I bless all. Since then, O oh beloved one, I have found the wisdom of the Master's words, Condemn not, lest ye be condemned. I thank thee, O eternal love, that I have found thee in time. Amen. It may be that some of you have not yet comprehended the completeness of what I have said. There are many things who have passed over your mind because your mind is not yet capable of receiving the whole of this truth. But as you go on, each night it will become clearer as further explanations are made. So therefore do not struggle with what I have told you. Allow it to remain in your mind so that it will come up of its own accord and will unite with what I have got to say to you later. Therefore, do not struggle. Read these lessons quietly over to yourselves. Do not try and struggle to understand them, but allow it to enter into your minds. And shortly, the clearing of the mind becomes. And what I have got to say to you later on you will link up, and what is in your mind will then be ready to sprout forth and blossom into truth. Now let us be. Let us enter into the sanctuary of the silent Sanctuary of the silent But sanctuary in where there is peace. Where all outer things have passed away. But there in the quietness of the inner soul dwells that mighty power greater than greater than all sons, because it is the Almighty Himself. This was the words of the Master, Know ye not, I am the Father, and the Father is in you. Is the Father, whoever remains within me, is performing his own deeds. These are not my thoughts. These are a truth that belongs to eternity. You will find them within yourselves. The peace will come.